So All right, in Ted Ottawa, Cruz. Defense Minister Harjit Sajjan speaking this hour at the Department of National Defense headquarters in Ottawa. He's going to be talking about transparency and public consultations on Canada's defense policy. So let's listen to what the minister has to say. Threats like ISIL, Boko Haram, which once would have seemed uh, to be a small localized sources of instability, can cause ripples that reach our shores. Uh, in addition, we have seen cyberspace uh, cyberspace that become an extension of the modern battlefield. Um, as our country prepares to meet the challenges of the future, we have to take a broad look at what we want to accomplish. To not only, uh, to not only change what we do, but to change the way in which we do it. This is why our defense review will be broad and transparent. We will listen to experts uh, and to Canadians about what they want to see from their government. And as the Prime Minister has said, if we are to tackle the real challenges we face as a country, Canadians need to have the faith in their government's honesty and willingness to listen. Those words were written in the mandate letters to all ministers. And like my colleagues, I have taken them to heart. Now this marks the first public consultation of this magnitude on Canadian defence policy in over 20 years. Since being named the Minister of National Defence in November, I have met with many of my counterparts. Uh, our friends in the United Kingdom, Australia and New Zealand um, have all recently undertaken their defence reviews. I have spoken to many of them about the reviews and the tools that they used. I asked the questions, um, asking about their, uh, the questions they asked, about the lessons they learned along the way, their, the, their insights will inform our approach to this process. I have also spoken with my US counterpart, uh, Secretary of Defence Ash Carter, and given the close ties between our countries, particularly the, uh, the nearly 60 years of partnership defending our shared airspace through NORAD. We will continue to discuss these important issues with our closest ally uh, to the south. I have also been briefed extensively by uh, defence officials on the current state of the military and where they see the areas of greatest need. I am pleased to be supported by two outstanding individuals in General Jonathan Vance and Deputy Minister John Forrester, as well as the tens of thousands of military members and civilian staff who report to them. They do extraordinary work in support of Canada and our interests. My goal is to establish a renewed vision uh, for our military that will be nested in our foreign policy, a vision that is based in an understanding of the challenges and the opportunities of an unpredictable security environment a vision that allows the Canadian Armed Forces to leverage their unique skills and expertise, and a vision that gives our men and women in uniform the capabilities they need to succeed now and into the future. In other words, what do we need the Canadian Armed Forces to do? How will we train and equip them uh, for those roles? What will that force of the future be structured like? And uh, what do Canadians expect from their armed forces? As I mentioned, we will be taking a broad and transparent approach to this, uh, to this process, one that will produce a truly Canadian vision for defence. And the first phase of that approach begins today, with those of you here and those watching at home. As your Minister of National Defence, I'm ultimate, ultimately responsible for this review. To assist me in this important work, four distinguished Canadians have been appointed to my advisory panel. Louise Arbour, the Honourable Bill Graham, General Retired Ray Hanot and Margaret Purdy. Louise, now all of you know who Louise Arbour is. She's one of the, uh, Canada's foremost citizens. She's a former Supreme Court Justice, United Nations Commissioner for Human Rights, and the Chief Prosecutor responsible for the indictment of Slobodan Milosevic for war crimes and crimes against humanity. Her contribution to the cause of international justice cannot be overstated. I can think of no one better suited to advise me on the ways in which Canada's Canadian values can be promoted in a manner respectful of justice and human rights. The Honourable Bill Graham will be familiar to many of you as well. He has served as both Minister of Foreign Affairs and Minister of National Defence and, and is an accomplished practitioner of international law. His insight and in how defence and diplomacy can be used in tandem to meet modern challenges will be of tremendous use and I'm pleased to be able to count on his support. General Reti Retired Ray Hano. He's a 40-year uh, veteran of the Canadian Armed Forces. He is a former Chief of Defence Staff who has also served as a Senior Military Advisor to the North Atlantic Council for three years. General Hono also, was also Chairman of the NATO, mil uh, NATO Military Committee. His perspective, uh, perspective on the future of NATO as well as other issues will be invaluable to this review. 
Um, Ms. Margaret Purdy, who's, who's nearly 30 years of service to Canada, has included positions as Associate Deputy Minister of National Defence and Deputy Secretary to the Cabinet on Security and Intelligence Issues. Since leaving government, she has published articles on the root causes of terrorism, security of trade and transportation, and Canada's counterterrorism policy. Given the enduring threat of terrorism, her input to the re review will be essential. The role of this panel will be to provide me with the insight and perspective that comes from their many years of experience in the realm of international defense and security. I'm truly honored to be uh, receiving their support and these esteemed individuals, from, from these esteemed individuals, and I'm proud of their continued dedication to Canada. I look forward uh, to working with them over the coming months as the consultation phase of the review gets underway. In addition, I will continue to speak with my officials, our allies, our partners, and with the members of the advisory panel, but I will need your input as well. And so I'm introducing three consultation initiatives uh, for the public, for experts, and for parliamentarians. First, I'm releasing a public consultation uh, paper, which is available online uh, and through our social media channels. Uh, it has a number of questions, as well as uh, basic facts and figures on the current state of the Canadian Armed Forces that will provide common ground uh, from which to begin. Its purpose is to kickstart a national discussion on defence issues. I invite all Canadians to review uh, this paper and, for, and provide me with their thoughts and comments our government is eager to generate a conversation on the way forward for our country, a conversation that considers expert opinion, one that considers fact and is based on evidence, a conversation that will involve all Canadians. I'm also announcing the creation of an online web portal to facilitate this, this discussion and make it easier uh, to provide feedback. And as I said, there has not been a public consultation on defence policy of this magnitude since 1994, so I think you'll agree it is long overdue. Second, as part of our commitment to a credible, evidence-based approach to policy development, we will be hosting six expert roundtables across the country. These roundtables will give us a chance to hear from academics, defence experts and stakeholders. Third, in acknowledgement of the critical role of parliamentarians in the discussion of national issues, I will be taking a number of steps to involve them in this process. I have written to the Defence Committees of the House of Commons and the Senate inviting them to consider several different topics of particular interest. I will also be providing to all members of Parliament and all Senators um, that will uh, allow them to hold discussions, uh, uh, sorry, I will be providing information to all members of Parliament and all Senators that will allow them to hold discussions of their own uh, in their writings and the regions. I invite MPs from all parties to consult with their constituents on this. This consultation phase will run from today until the end of July, after which the department will consider these submissions and conduct its analysis. I expect the formal review to conclude by the end of 2016 and the formal policy document to be published, excuse me, and published thereafter. I encourage all Canadians to participate in the consultation process. Canadians should have confidence uh, their government is working to advance their interests and values. The best way to, the best way to be sure uh, that is to tell us what those interests and values are. So I urge you to review the consultation paper to put forward innovative and policy proposals. It is my hope that this consulta consultation process will be, um, will be the beginning of an ongoing conversation about defence and security, a conversation that will produce a shared Can Canadian vision for defence. Now when our men and women in uniform deploy on international operations or on search and rescue missions to help flood victims flood victims from coast to coast to coast, they are not representing any particular region or any particular party. They are representing the best of what Canada has to offer, both to our fellow citizens and to the world. So we, uh, so as we move forward in this review, let us accord them the same courtesy and let's give them the best that we have to offer. Thank you and I'll open up to questions. We will now start with questions for the Minister. There are microphones on each side of the room and we will alternate between the two and the phones. Please identify yourselves as well as your news agency. And please limit yourselves to one question and one follow-up. Please identify yourself and your agency. Please limit yourself to one main question and one follow-up. We'll begin with a question on my left. Bonjour, Monsieur le Ministre. Michel Lamarche, TVA Nouvelle. Michel Lamarche, uh, question TVA Nouvelle. For you, starting on Monday, there will be another consultation, uh, that one regarding sexual misconduct in the forces, uh, you'll survey every members 
I want to know what you're expecting. Do you expect result of a really inclusive work environment? Absolutely. Um, as uh, I've stated and the Chief of Defense have stated many times, uh, there is absolutely no, uh, no tolerance uh, for this type of behavior in the Canadian Armed Forces. And I encourage all members to participate uh, in this service so that we can have greater information and data as we move forward. And as a defense review, as we launch into the defense review, all operations and uh, what we do does continue. And the great and the work that we have committed to, uh, especially with this survey, uh, that has to continue alongside this. And what do you tell to uh, the members that might be reluctant to participate? Um, I encourage them to uh, bring uh, this forward, that they, that uh, um, for us to be able to uh, make this change and take action on their behalf, first we need to be able to, uh, for them to uh, bring this forward. I know it's, it, at times it's difficult, um, but rest assured that uh, their, um, um, uh, their courage is greatly appreciated. Now we'll move to the microphone on my right. Julie Van Dusen, CBC. Minister Sajjan, uh, can you elaborate a little bit on the logic of your review? Um, no matter what you come up with, you won't have the necessary equipment, uh, the planes, the ships, to implement your strategy for years to come. Actually, the, um, the logic is sound. We need to do a defense review to actually uh, determine um, not only the capabilities that we need, um, but also um, help us with the, uh, um, how they're going to be employed. Um, the defense review is going to be the guiding principle in terms uh, of for, for this. Um, we are committed uh, to replacing the CF-18s and we are con committed to the National Shipbuilding Program to making sure that our Navy has the right uh, capability. But the defense review is going to give us a greater focus to making sure that we have the right capabilities, the force structure, because it's not just about having uh, the necessary tools. How do you employ them is also just as uh, critical as well.